Hi again, everyone. So, this is the last vlog about Nehemiah. Sorry, <laughs> the sun was out and then it suddenly went behind a cloud. Um, but yes, this is the last vlog for Nehemiah. Um, we are on Nehemiah 12, but I'm going to do just a combined Nehemiah 12 and 13. The sun is back out again, yay. <laughs> um, just because Nehemiah 12 is simply just Nehemiah like listing off the tribes that moved in to Jerusalem after the wall and the city was rebuilt. Um, and so, you know, that's what chapter 12 is about. But chapter 13 is really poignant, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, you can go and read it yourself. I just kind of want to give you like the cliff notes, I guess, kind of version of Nehemiah 13, just because this last chapter is so poignant, I believe. Um, because basically what happens is, I mean, if as you remember, Nehemiah is the cupbearer for the king. And the king gave him permission to go for a certain season to go and rebuild his beloved hometown, his city. And so he had to return back to his station as the cupbearer for the king. So he went away for a season and came back to Jerusalem and found that all the work he had done, a lot of the work he had done to rebuild the city, to get the priests in place, to get the gatekeepers in place, and to get the Levites, the worshipers in place, a lot of that had been undone by the Israelites' disobedience. So they were starting to bring in foreign gods and they were starting to literally kick out the Levites and send them to go live in houses rather than taking care of the temple. And they were using the, um, the offerings in the temple for like greedy purposes. So, of course, Nehemiah is absolutely grief-stricken, but he's also incredibly angry. And he basically, like, lays down the law. It says he literally put hands on people. Um, he, he got down and dirty about that, um, that offense, you know. And to me, there's two things that this chapter shows. It was not a happily ever after, you know. Um... I think a lot of times we think that most Bible stories are happily ever after or that it always resolves in this perfect, beautiful, happy ending. But humanity is messy. And even in the best of circumstances, we can be incredibly disobedient and completely not in tune with what we're supposed to do in serving God and being obedient. Um, and so there's th that's one thing that that this chapter shows me. The other thing it shows me is um, is that as a leader, you know, if, if we are leading ourselves first as uh, as being obedient to God, um, first of all, we have to expect that we're going going to be faulty too. We're going to have glitches and we're going to not always get it right. Um, but I think that if we truly care about God's temple, which in the New Testament is our own heart and our own body, um, that we need to be grieved about sin too. And we need to be disciplined um, and willing to be disciplined when we get off track. Um, the other thing too is, I, is like in that same vein is Nehemiah's passion and zeal for the house of the Lord that he you know he doesn't take it lightly you know he has words and he uses discipline to get people back on track um you know and and I hope that all of us who call ourselves leaders in the Christian community or in the if we are we call ourselves disciples of Christ that we would be passionate about worship and we would speak up when um, worship is being defiled or not honored in the house of God. Um, and that doesn't just mean churches, church buildings. That means the church. <laughs> um, now, in the New Testament, there's a lot more. There is a different kind of mercy and grace for disobedience than the Old Testament. 
So we might not go as medieval <laughs> as Nehemiah, but I do think it's still important to speak up. Um, and it's important to hold yourself accountable to are you honoring God's temple? He saved you. He rebuilt you. He, I mean, I can say that for my life. He has literally rebuilt my life. I was, I was Jerusalem in shambles. And he has rebuilt my walls and rebuilt the city of who I am internally. And so it gives me a fear of God to never go astray again, to never allow myself and my life to be demolished like that and to really be fervent about that. So that's what I have to share. This concludes our study of Nehemiah. I hope you've enjoyed it. And, um, you know, Christmas is coming up. Last year I did Vlogmas, but I don't think I'm going to this year just because it really burnt me out. And there's already plenty of things to stress me out in this holiday season that I don't need to add to that. So I think um, I'll probably not do Vlogmas this year, um, but I have some um, I have some projects coming up, some, some really cool, I have a really cool um, partnership that I'm gonna share with you guys uh, in the first week in December. So keep your eyes peeled for that, and thanks for watching.